Sebastian Borde is having an incredible sophomore season in Champ Car, leading the way in the battle for the championship. He's already won four races, three of them from the pole, and he's going for four wins in a row. A key to that success is qualifying, where he started no worse than third. Not far behind him in the standings, his teammate, the consistent Bruno Jancara, still looking for his first championship. Just behind him sits Patrick Carpanche, who has reached the podium twice this season. But nobody can count out last year's Molson Indy Vancouver winner, Paul Tracy. He sits fourth in the standings and is digging in for a fight to the finish. The Molson Indy Vancouver qualifying show is next on the Global Television Network. Canadians wanting to do their best in the West. Patrick Carpanche, third in Toronto two weeks ago, second here in 99. Is this a good thing? Paul Tracy, the defending champ, must speak up now to defend his race and his championship. Two Vancouver wins for him is the third on the way. Alex Tagliani still searching for his first champ car victory. Will it end here? He did start first here in 2001. And oh yes, the competition is ready. Sebastian Borde hoping to join select company with a four straight win. Third here a year ago, simply the best, the last three races. Teammate Bruno Jancara, second here last year, always there to second the notion, but wanting more this time, a win would start that. Ryan Hunter Ray, won in Milwaukee in June, an emerging champ car star. Will he rise to the occasion? He's already had something to say this weekend. And Justin Wilson, new kid in the block, but can he walk the walk? Those that know say it's only a matter of time for him. There are the drivers standings as we head into another weekend of action. Sebastian Bourdais taking over courtesy of that win in Toronto. It's race weekend and the storyline and tension have already started to piece themselves together. Plenty happening trackside. Plenty of sights and sounds for the fans to take in. All leading up to the green flag for the 15th Molson Indy Vancouver tomorrow. First, let's set up some interesting qualifying. Hello, everybody. Jim Taddy welcoming you along the Global Television Network to our broadcast position here in Vancouver as we set the stage for qualifying for tomorrow's Molson Indy Vancouver. A bright, sunny weather forecast yesterday, today, and likely tomorrow, and that's meant for some very fast times and some exciting qualifying. Our location literally over my shoulder, the start-finish line, we're all over that, and Chris McClure and Jan Bikas will be all over the action very shortly. Our pit crew remains the same. Don Martin and Todd Lewis, they'll be checking in shortly, but there is one clue I can give you, and it's a rather obvious one. The storyline this year on this series Borders around Sebastian Borde. Seabass is his nickname. Nothing fishy about his driving. There you see it. Monterey started first, finished first. Portland, the same story. Cleveland from third to first. And Toronto, simply dominant. You remember this qualifying from a couple of weekends ago in Toronto. He snuck by Paul Tracy late in the qualifying to get things done. And uh, he took the pole and took the race. Had no trouble at all. Tracy simply could not catch him. Here's why the pole is so important to him. Look what he's done. Pole in Monterey, Portland, and Toronto. He wins in Milwaukee. That went to Ryan Hunter Ray. So four of the six races this year have been won by the pole sitter. Let's go to Friday qualifying. Very early in this session, Ryan Hunter Ray was the first to speak up, setting the best time, setting the bar for all to take a run at it. Oh, yeah, they did take a run at it. The answer came quickly from the defending champ, Paul Tracy, who took over the provisional pole, but it wasn't a lock for him either. The hottest driver this season, Sebastian Borde. Seabass had something to say, and everybody had to listen because he was razor sharp. And again, he raises the bar. No sooner had that happened when Patrick Arpanche won up him to take over the provisional pole for a short period of time. And to nobody's surprise, yeah, he's back. Borde came back with his own personal best. But you know what? When the checkered flag hit this session, it was Paul Tracy. And even though he had his best time removed because of an impeding, impeding infraction, he was still able to take the pole and enjoy the moment. There are the standings uh, as far as Friday's qualifying are concerned. The top six, Tracy leading the way. Good Canadian representation, and it stacks up like this after Friday's qualifying. Tracy first, Carpanche third, and Tags fifth. And we add the point now to the standings. Paul Tracy now has 109. The center of attention here, he's the defending champion standing by with Todd Lewis. Todd? Paul, in Toronto a couple of weeks ago, 
You tried something on Saturday to maybe make the car fork go faster, and it didn't work out for you. You were experimenting a bit this morning in practice, too. Going to try something or go with what worked yesterday? Uh, we're pretty much going to stay with how we, we ran yesterday. Yesterday, it's how we ran the race last year, and uh, it was good yesterday. So we tried a couple things this morning. It was hard to say whether it was better or worse. Uh, so we'll see how it goes this afternoon. We'll see if it works out for Paul Tracy. Up to Don Martin. Thanks, Todd. Alex Hagliani had the poll here three years ago. Fifth fastest in provisional qualifying yesterday. Have you found a few things on the car that can shave the time a little for you? We hope. Uh, that's, you know, the, the two front teams, the Newman Oz team and the Forsyth team, is really strong. So uh, we've been working really hard. We tried everything we can. So we'll see. I mean, uh, if, we, if we would be able to get in the top three, it would be a very good achievement for us. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of work uh, against those two teams. Thanks, Tag. Best of luck. Now down to Todd Lewis. Patrick, you had a great showing in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. Really boosted you in the championship. Another good outing here could move you up even further. How's the car? Yeah, it's been great. It was really good yesterday. Struggled a little bit early in the practice this morning, but uh, we think we have a good car, so we'll give it a shot today. Quick Canadians all around so far. Back up top to Jim. Thanks very much, Todd. Bit of an ad-lib situation for Alex Tagliani's Rocket Sports team. We'll take you back to Friday, race week in Toronto. And one of their drivers, Nelson Philippe, uh, parted ways with the Rocket Sports team. The call goes up to Mamo Gidley. There he is in the cockpit going into turn three, some contact. The poor guy didn't really get to work this car until Saturday. That's when he arrived in town. And in lap 36, he goes out. There he is a year ago working with Chris McClure in our broadcast booth. And things have obviously turned for the better for him. And a year later, well, look at that. Chris has now found uh, Jan Bikas back with us. Jan does a great job. But I have to ask the question, Jan, is there a comeback in the books? Jim, I think you know the answer to that. The only <laughs> place I'm racing is back and forth to the airport. And I'm going with him. But, you know, the fact is, Memo Gidley's return to Vancouver has so far been productive. Ninth after Friday qualifying on the overnight grid. And that really stands in stark contrast to a couple of weeks ago. It's a huge difference. In Toronto... Jim told it great. It was a situation where he got a last-minute phone call, a red eye, had to get fitted for a seat at the last moment, and for a driver, that's disconcerting. And add to that, he missed the whole first day of running. Completely different story here in Vancouver. He has an opportunity to get to know the team, understand how they work, and he has been all smiles all weekend. He thinks he's got a real hot rod there. And he may improve his position in the upcoming qualifying, but what about the others? Is Paul Tracy's overnight pole in jeopardy? Well, his time may be in jeopardy, but I'm not so sure that the pole position for Paul Tracy is. The reason I say that is I think that Alex Tagliani put it well. There's two teams you really have to watch, Newman Haas and, of course, the Forsyth boys. And I think what it is is this weekend, speaking with Sebastian Bourdais, I don't think that he has the car that he wants. He just has a little bit of he's holding back somewhat, thinking that the car may not do what he wants to. Advantage Paul Tracy, in my opinion. Well, everybody out there is certainly looking for the racer's edge. Sometimes it's aerodynamics, and sometimes it's sheer power, and sometimes it's shoes. Here's Jan. One of the keys to any race weekend is tire management. Now, you have eight sets of brand-new tires to use throughout the weekend, actually seven because you have to give one back after the first practice. Now, we refer to those as sticker tires simply because they still have the sticker on them from Bridgestone, meaning brand new tires. Now, what's the big deal about brand new tires? Well, they have a performance curve where they are really good for about the first four laps. They fall off a little, and then they maintain that speed for the duration of the race. So that little four-lap window is when you can do your fast laps. So here's what you do. In qualifying, you must run a tire that is stamped for qualifying. They stamp four sets for a weekend. But who's to say you have to run them? You don't have to run new tires in practice. You don't have to run all your tires in qualifying. If you choose to only use one set in qualifying, you can save a brand new set for the race. And if you can put brand new tires on every stop of the race, for those first four laps, you can get big time speed. Thanks very much, John. This is Paul Tracy a year ago. Had no trouble. There was just one glitch for him. Off the green flag, Bruno Giancara jumped in front of him. It took them 24 laps to straighten that out. And after that was dealt with, it was Paul Tracy's day. We're going to continue on with our qualifying report from Concord Pacific Place on the Global Television Network right after this timeout. Remember back in Toronto when Rocket Sports changed drivers at the last moment? They brought Memo Gidley in and he got there Friday night. 
one of the things they had to do was build him a seat. But how? They have seat kits. These are the instructions. Fairly complete, but let me give you the shorthand. The first thing you do is whip up a witch's brew. You have some resin and you have some hardener. It all goes into this bucket. You mix it thoroughly, get it all consistent. And then you take it over to this bag, a plastic bag full of styrofoam balls inside. With the funnel in the tube, you put it in there through this valve and then mix it all through the entire bag. Make it nice and even, good consistency in there so it'll start bonding. When that's begun, you take the whole bag, you move it over to the car, you put it in the cockpit, spread it around nice and even. Then the driver gets in and you stuff it around his shoulders and under his legs. You put it where he wants it to be. After that's been accomplished, you put a vacuum pump on that valve and draw all the air out so it's right up tight around the driver's body and his legs and everything. And once he's comfortable, he sits still for up to a half an hour till it starts to set up. Then they pull him out of the car and wait for several more hours for it to get good and hard. Then they start trimming the edges and taping a little bit, shape it, baby it, make it just what the driver wants. And within another hour or so, you've got a driver's seat. Molson has a long and proud history of involvement in sports and entertainment activities and events in Canada. Since 1990, the Molson Indy Vancouver has been a prominent part of that tradition. This year, the Molson Indy is celebrating 15 years in Vancouver. We've welcomed over 2 million people over the years, and this year we anticipate close to 160,000 fans will pass through our gates. In addition to providing fans with great racing action, the Molson Indy Vancouver is a great boost to the local economy and tourism industry. With people tuning into the race in over 150 countries, the event further showcases Canada and Vancouver to the world. The Molson Indy generates approximately $30 million for the local economy. We're also proud to have contributed over $1 million to numerous local charities since we began. Of course, an event of this magnitude would not be possible without the support of an outstanding team. I would like to thank the municipal and provincial governments, tireless volunteers, numerous sponsors, and the teams and drivers. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, thanks to the loyal race fans. From everyone at Molson, enjoy a safe and exciting Molson Indy Vancouver. All right, here's our look, at, uh, look ahead list uh, for tomorrow. Race day coverage begins at 3.30 in the East, 12.30 Pacific time live across the global television network and of course about a month from now qualifying show saturday august 28th from montreal race day the following day sunday august 29th 12 30 eastern 9 30 pacific time there are your qualifying standings tracy the man to beat rodolfo levine his teammate on the move up the board and now we join chris mcclure and jan Bikas. This second round of qualifying well underway. Rodolfo Levine just concluded a lap as he gets up to speed a little bit earlier. Ryan Hunter Ray turned a 61.5, his quickest lap of the weekend after an early morning problem that damaged some of the car. And he is currently resting on the outside of row number one. Levine right now at 62.197 the last time around. A good representative lap for him, but he needs, needs to make a quantum leap forward to get into the top. Top five, working on the straightaway, high speed right here. At the beginning of the second round of qualifying, it does appear as though the track is a little bit slippery. We see some of the guys taking big risks. Rodolfo Levine is one of those that will push as hard as he can while he has some clear racetrack. Again, trying to get the sweet spot on those tires and time it perfectly. The guys who go out early are looking to just try and capitalize on not much traffic. Chicane just ahead a couple of more turns and the lap will be concluded. Now they have a different timing line for qualifying. It's right about there where uh, Levine was a second ago and we get his report 61 668. So he moves into the top 10 with that lap but not into the top five. You see Ryan Hunter Ray listed in second position there. Most of the contenders still have to come out and Dominguez Hunter Ray's uh, teammate has just earned a 61 three and jumped into third on his time of this day a sunny sunshine bathed warm day in Vancouver record temperatures around this part of British Columbia the last couple of days although the racetrack has held up very very well we've had some indication that this afternoon it might be more slippery than it's been all weekend and traditionally when the racetrack gets hotter you just would think 
then it's going to get slower. The hotter it gets, the oil that's in the asphalt and the rubber tends to come up out of it and make it more slick. But a lot of the drivers thought yesterday that the hot track temperatures, which are uncommon, as you say, for Vancouver, actually gave these Bridgestones more grip, and that's why they had big speed. 61, 353 three for Levine, who just concluded a lap. He's now fourth on the grid, at least for the time being. A nice qualifying run for this youngster. He's got a lot of room out there to operate on and not much turbulence to deal with, and he's making the most of it. Onto the straightaway, up to about 165 to 70 miles an hour before he slows down for turn number six. Turn six is third gear. About 80 miles an hour at the slowest point. A quick spurt past the support pits and then a long sweeping corner here that's one thing people talk about vancouver the drivers in particular like the variety of corners there's no real two corners alike here there's fast slow medium he just went through the slowest corner on the racetrack at 45 miles an hour and again at the end of a lap right there it is that one is 60.980 he is nearly equal to paul tracy's friday pole time what a run for Levine as he moves on to the front row. We've got a very fast racetrack. Meantime, Mario Dominguez, who was in second just a moment ago, this just happened to him while we watched Levine. Missed the corner. Couldn't get the car slowed down enough for turn number six and wisely decided to take it down the escape road instead of locking up the brakes, getting a flat spot on the tires. And that is a wise move, and that may seem easy, but that, that's a tough call to make. Do I abort the lap? and? and go out into the escape road or try and make it through and sometimes just uh, discretion is the better part of valor so six laps on that set of tires and dominguez leaves the course and listed in fifth position at 61.168 actually i believe he's in fourth in terms of his time but he is on pit road and paul tracy is now out for his first run and as he brings it up to temperature we'll take just a brief pause and wait to see what mr tracy has in mind more qualifying in a moment, but first, here's how Paul Tracy's season breaks down, and literally it does. First race at Long Beach, he won 78 laps, led in five races since then. He's only led for 13 laps. And if you go back a couple of weeks ago, he was downright aggressive. There he is in turn three. He had two black flags, did finish fifth, but it was clear that he didn't want to finish second. He wanted to go for it, went for it, he did, and uh, got some drive-through penalties. Did finish fifth, and there's a hit with uh, Jordan Jr., and he's in a similar spot this week. Uh, last uh, race, he was defending his championship, and he's doing it again, so we'll see how he responds as the qualifying continues from the Molson Indy Vancouver on the Global Television Network right after this timeout. Global's got the Molson Indy Vancouver Sunday at 3. Hop in the driver's seat, burn up the track with the Molson Indy Synchrocast with the live leaderboard and in-car telemetry. You'll be able to follow your favorite drivers as they race for the checkered flag. Catch the Molson Indy Synchrocast live at im.ca. Race time Sunday, 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern. Now a driving legend, Al Unser Jr., won twice in Toronto, four times in Vancouver, six times in Canada. First win in Vancouver, 1990, the start of a driver's championship season. Won it three years in a row, 94, also a championship season. Al Unser Jr. certainly made a name for himself, not only in Vancouver, but all over the place, but has fond memories of Vancouver. Now back to more qualifying. Tracy and Levine leading the way. What will happen next? Well, we can't waste any time talking about it. Let's check out the action with Chris McClure and Jan Bikas. Off turn 10, Paul Tracy hits the timing lights. He's now on the clock with his teammate just behind him, Patrick Carpentier. So we keep an eye on that. Paul Tracy on the overnight pole with a time of 60.870. That started buzz around this track that we might get a one-lap record. 2002, the record was set by Cristiano D'Amata at 60.339. That is definitely within reach. Todd Lewis. Just a quick update on Paul Tracy. Had to do a little bit of repair work on the right front wing after the practice session, just prior to qualifying. Clipped a little bit of debris that was off the course. A little bit of repair work, nothing serious. Paul Tracy, good to go. He's at the southern loop in front of the support pits. A few more turns, and he'll have this first lap at speed 
in the book. I doubt this is going to be a particularly quick one, but we'll ride along and make sure just in case he's got one up his sleeve. However, it is the setup to what could be one of his first two. You can tell there wasn't a lot of grip coming off the Science World corner there. It doesn't mean that he couldn't start a good lap here, but it does take a little while to build some temperature. And most important, the tire pressure. Once you get the tires heated up, then the pressures come up and the car starts to work, but it should still take a lap or two. 63.7, so he's three seconds off yesterday's time. Still getting her all warmed up, as you suggest, Jan. It'll take a couple of more laps before we see a real flyer. I think Paul would really like to get that one lap record and secure a second point in the championship for the weekend. What's interesting, I think, about the whole tire pressure, tire temperature thing is unlike Formula One, they don't have tire warmers and you have to go out with the tires cold, I guess you would say, not up to operating temperature and not up to operating pressure. Justin Wilson, oh, Paul's got to be careful. He's a good idea because you know they've been issuing a lot of penalties. If you impede someone during qualifying, they put the hammer down on you, as happened to Paul Tracy yesterday. He lost his fastest lap, although he retained the pole position. So what I was saying is that in Champ Car, what's great is the fact that you don't have tire warmers. The first few laps that you're on the racetrack, you really have to be a driver to be able to hang on to the thing and get the most out of it. So Paul coming to the conclusion of a lap as Wilson peels off and moves into the pits. There you see the flash of blue as Paul Tracy went on by. That time it was a, a very slow lap for Paul, 71.2 seconds. There's a look at Carpentier, and he's got Bruno Junquera right on his hip as they work through turns one and two and into three right there. They'll want to get separated before they go after anything, particularly Junquera. Shankara is a guy, I mean, they well, obviously were communicating with the pits, and it's just kind of a cat and mouse thing, but what has changed, it used to be you'd catch up to someone and you'd slow down to try and get a gap, but now because they have been so aggressive on the penalties, and I should say at the request of the drivers, that you have to be so careful that when you slow down, you don't impede somebody, and it's actually a harder process than it used to be. Both the Forsyth cars working on the southern loop. Here comes Carpentier gaining ground on the course against Paul Tracy as they run in that two-car serial. I think Patrick might have slowed down there to create some gap. He's through the chicane, and Paul has pretty much driven off his last lap, 64-5. Perhaps Paul jumping into a lap, and here comes Carpentier. It appeared that he got on the hammer that time as well. And Junquera, with some space on the straightaway, perhaps, so oh, I don't know, 100 yards between them as they both go into turn number one. So still operating at relatively close quarters. Was that one of the Forsyth cars coming out of turn one behind Junquera? Did, did uh, Carpentier move over and let him go through? It was definitely one of the Forsyth cars in turn number one. Well, we don't know. Perhaps there's uh, Carpentier. He's in front of Junquera. Maybe Paul missed turn one or got offline over there, but they, they both apparently drove past him. Now, Carpentier is really getting with it here. This, uh, this should be a good lap of record. Almost to the science world chicane. That's his next complex of turns with the left-hander, the right here, they ride up on the curb, exit speed at the stripe, take a look at the board, 61.5, pretty good lap, but not quite what he did yesterday. There's Sebastian Bourdais, who many figure may do what he did in Toronto, and that is steal the pole away from Paul Tracy on the second day. Uh -oh. And Bruno Junquera has gone directly into the tires. That is, I believe, at the head of the straightaway, just before the start-finish line. That may be it for his qualifying as he climbs out of the cockpit. Junquera has drawn a red flag, so we're going to stop the session for a few moments. Tracy still has the pole based on Friday's time. Roberto Levine is on the front row with him, and everything is going to grind to a stop. Here's what happened. Oh, he hit the curb, and the suspension broke. Wow, that is a fairly big curb, but you would not expect that to break a steering arm. The actual steering arm on the right front snapped as he hit the curb, and then no steering. So it's all stop in Vancouver, at least for a moment.
tough break for Bruno Jancara. Let's set the stage here. Race day coverage begins tomorrow, live here across the global television network, 3.30 in the east, 12.30 on the west coast. And about a month from now, we're going to be in Montreal, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, setting the stage for the qualifying show Saturday, August 28th, 7 p.m. local time. Race day, of course, the following day, the Sunday, 12.30 in the east, 9.30 in the west. And uh, two rookie drivers trying to make a name for themselves. We're going to track these guys. Justin Wilson, uh, 83 points. They're tied with 83 points. A.J. Allmendinger certainly has the right initials. If he wants to be a good uh, racing driver, and he's on his way. Here's the Justin Wilson story, former F1 driver. The promise for greatness is there. This guy is no slouch. He's almost six foot four tall, which is huge for a driver. So far this year, first two races, sixth in Long Beach, sixth in Monterey, fifth in Portland in early June, qualified fifth, but finished 12th in Toronto. But keep an eye on Justin Wilson and A.J. Allmendinger this weekend. Uh, they are the future of this circuit. More qualifying coming up on the Global Television Network right after this timeout as we set the stage for the Molson Indy Vancouver. Welcome back to Vancouver. And before we proceed with the qualifying, let's go back to Toronto. And Jimmy Vassar really had a quiet afternoon and a very efficient one. And he was happy when it was over. Finished second. A very durable veteran performer, an American. And that's a big factor when you're selling this circuit stateside. And, of course, as I mentioned, durable. Well, consider this. 191 consecutive starts when he takes the green flag tomorrow. And he's one away from Al Unser, Jr. Well, it's not the least bit repetitive to keep talking about Sebastian Borde because we were talking about young drivers earlier, and this guy's made up all kinds of ground. He's only in his second year. He's on a great run, and it actually started a year ago right here. I was fairly happy with the performance of the car, and actually I was really even more happy because that was the first time I felt very comfortable with the setup we had on the street course with the soft compound that Bridgestone is, uh, is using here and in most of the street courses. So that kind of gave me the confidence I, I needed and uh, that I think is the real starting point of our good performances on street races. I don't know about tactics, you know, the, the team is always taking care of that and, uh, you know, it's their call. We do whatever they ask us to do. But uh, I, I more or less think, you know, about the setup, and I think we should be in pretty good shape because uh, the Magnus car was good in Toronto. The setup I was happy with is going to be very similar to, to Vancouver, and, you know, and there's really no reason that it couldn't be, you know, competitive. So I'm just, you know, pretty happy to, to restart the weekend there, and, uh, and hopefully it's going to work out just fine. It just suggests that this year you cannot afford to go down. So whatever it takes, score the points and see the checker. It's much better to finish even in the top 10 than taking the risk, you know, for a position and, uh, and, and crashing. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, I mean, to put your name in a book, you know. Uh, obviously, it's not, you know, the, the, the real target, but uh, at the end of the day, really what What's important is to score big points, and the situation we are in right now is, is in our favor. So let's just not to screw it all over, you know, because uh, we have we have a pretty good situation right now, and, and if I don't do any mistakes, we have a good shot at the championship. So I'm just going to try really to stay focused. If if I have a win this weekend, great. If it's the podium, it's going to be as great. Sebastian Borde and the Newman Haas team, and they had a bitter, very sweet weekend in Toronto. There's Bruno Jancara going out in the first turn, and it sort of uh, mirrors what happened to him in the qualifying today. And, of course, he's a perennial bridesmaid, would like to change all that. Uh, a lot of collision there and uh, knocked him out. He was very disappointed. An early day for him. But, of course, here's the very sweet part. Sebastian Borde, his car had the look, according to Jan Bikas, right from the moment it came out of the box and had a flawless weekend. Consistency here for Patrick Carpanche. You go back to 2002, third overall. 2003, fifth overall. And right now stands third overall. Very consistent, and that's a good thing. Unfortunately, limited success here in Vancouver. Second in 99, fifth here two years ago.
but did give it a run in Friday qualifying, and we haven't heard the last of him yet. Of course, he would certainly like to up his totals and bring the Foresight team into a closer, closer battle with the Newman Haas team in the overall standings, and a win would certainly solve that. More qualifying coming up on the Global Television Network as the gas car race drowns us out in the background. We'll be back right after this timeout. Welcome back. Another couple of drivers to keep an eye on this weekend. Matsukati and Haberfeld both coming off good performances in Toronto. Haberfeld fourth and Matsukani uh, sixth, and that is his best ever. And you want to keep an eye on Haberfeld because it's his second year on the circuit. In his debut race last year, finished fourth, three top fives and 11 top tens in his first season. Coming off that fourth place finish we mentioned in Toronto to tie his career best. Many wonder if this is the start of something good for him. Four top ten finishes already this year. Another driver to keep an eye on this year, this weekend. Mario Haberfeld of Walker Racing. And uh, we get back to the qualifying. Ten minutes left. You see Levine's still there. But look at our buddy, Mamo Kidley. Our big things in store for him. Let's rejoin Chris McClure and Jan Bikas. The cleanup for Bruno Junqueras incident has been concluded. And now time is very precious in this Saturday qualifying. Many of the contenders haven't really even yet had a flyer. Paul Tracy among them. Sebastian Bourdais never got his car warmed up. He elected to go out late, and it may have bit him just a little bit. So it's a mad rush onto the course here to get everything going. We're down to uh, less than 10 minutes to go in qualifying, and suddenly the drama is thrust upon us by Bruno Junquera going into the tires in turn number 12 and shortening this qualifying session. Each of the cars I just saw there, Paul Tracy, Justin Wilson, every car that we had in the shot, had left the pits on their second set of brand new tires so this is an opportunity again you cannot go out and do a fast lap right away it's going to take you two or three to get temperature and pressure and then you've got two or three maybe four shots at it when the tires are at their optimum Paul Tracy leads the serial onto the front straightaway he's created a little bit of a gap there he's passed the timing lights and on the clock but this lap is very unlikely to be especially quick as they try and create space among themselves behind Tracy. He's in turn number four, and at least for the moment in the catbird seat, the first one going around, he's got the cleanest air. And that is why you want to have the pit selection. You want to be towards pit out so that you're the first driver to be able to go out. Now, Paul Tracy doesn't want to drive too quickly here too soon. He doesn't want to start to catch cars that left the pits later, as he's starting to do now with his teammate Carpentier. Sebastian Bourdais, by the way, who was second quick in Friday qualifying, went out for three laps before Junquera hit the tires, and he is still in the pits. Todd Lewis is in the pits as well with Bruno Junquera. Bruno, this is a difficult time in Canada for you. You had troubles in Toronto in the first corner of the race, and you seem to be having your hands full with the car, and then all of a sudden something let go. It's maybe because I like Canada so much. I mean, the Pacific Air car, this 15 minutes warm up was great. I thought we could fight for the pole. And it's a shame that the suspension broke and put me on the wall. But I hope we're going to fix for tomorrow and have a great race. They'll be ready for the race, but we'll have to wait and see where they start. So a very tricky complex of two quick corners just before the front straightaway. Jump up and bright, bite Bruno Junquera and put him on the sideline for the qualifying. Here's Tracy. Now, the last trip around, as we thought, 64 seconds. Not nearly competitive enough for him, but this one may be a little bit quicker. Gradual warm-up for Tracy. Again, he knows he just needs... Well, actually, right now, he doesn't even need a fast lap. He's es essentially driving around defensively. Why would you go, you know, burn off your tires until you heard from the pits that you had to? Right now, it's his teammate. You know, we don't often think of Rodolfo Levine as Tracy's teammate, but, of course, it's a three-car stable at Forsyth. And, of course, it looks to me like he's been trying Paul's setup. Bourdais is now on course, probably the primary contender to steal the pole away from Mr. Tracy. But right now, Rodolfo Levine is sitting on the outside of row number one and Bourdais third, then Dominguez and Memo Gidley. A great run for that young driver who is only in his second outing on behalf of Rocket Sports. But here comes Tracy picking up some traffic as he gets onto the straightaway. That's Bourdais just in front of him. 
And this morning in practice, Bourdais held up Tracy very badly. And in fact, the stewards came down and spoke with Sebastian Bourdais about it. But because it was in practice and not qualifying, he was not penalized. But they told him point blank, Sebastian, if you do that in qualifying, that is a no-brainer. You're going to get a penalty. So he's got to be cautious here that he doesn't impede Paul Tracy. So Bourdais on his first trip around to get on the clocks. Meantime, uh, Tracy trying to get a good lap in. And Don Martin has more from the pits. Jan, you were bang on with the uh, theory on Rodolfo Levine. They are using a sit -up setup very similar to Paul Tracy's, which is a good thing for them. They lost yesterday's session with mechanical trouble. So they are definitely fighting from behind and doing a pretty good job of it at the moment. Chris? Sebastian Bourdais in turn number four. Paul Tracy has been on the radio with his team saying, tell him to get number two out of my way. I don't know that any action has been taken in that regard. You see the two Forsyth cars have pulled way back from number two. Bourdais, who's on the speed section of the course right now, all alone. This is only his fifth trip around, and it could be a pretty good lap. Just prior to the red flag, he did a 61.3. Yesterday, he did a 60.9 to put himself on the front row. But he backed off on the back. See, what he did is he saw in the mirrors that Paul Tracy had given him some room, so then he decided to take some space. That's the accordion effect when you get everybody out there on the racetrack at the same time. You just want to be sure you have clear road from right now. This is when he is going to be concentrated on everything that happens past that, not start finish line, but timing line that he just went across prior to the final corner and try and string one together. Last lap 66, so five seconds off the pace he's capable of as he works up to turn number four. Exit speed here is critical. It means everything at the other end. Serbia. Down an escape road. Frantically waving for the safety team to move in and get him going again. Let's see what happened. Well, the right side is locked wow. up. Big lock up. Turn six, I'll wager. Sure Usually enough. where that happens. Yep, into the back straight away. So he misses the corner like so many before. The champ car safety team on hand very quickly as they'll get him turned around, see if they can get him underway. Meantime, Bourdais continues to run laps in front of the Forsyth people. He just ran a 63, his seventh trip around. He may have some hot laps left, and we'll be back to look at him. Two weeks ago in Toronto, this was the point where Bourdais was ready to steal the pole from Paul Tracy. And look at that. That really underscores the, the brilliance of this young driver. There he is uh, a year and a half into his career, and he's already got 12 podium finishes. All those totals are after the first two years, so he's about to jump to the top of that list, and it's a very impressive list. A reminder that the race, of course, goes tomorrow. The qualifying show for Montreal will hit Saturday, August 28th at 7 p.m. local time. Race day, Sunday, August 29th, 12.30 in the east, 9.30 in the west. More qualifying from Concord Pacific Place on the Global Television Network right after this timeout. Remember back in Toronto, Ryan Hunter Ray had to come to the pits twice for a new nose wing assembly. Still ran eighth in the race and ran to the end. So how'd they do that so quickly and keep him in contention? Well, this button right here, it's called a bobbin, is key to the whole process. You take the old wing off, that's exposed on the center line of the car. It's going to fit with this notch right under here. So you take the wing, lift it up this way, usually two men do this, snap it into position, and the wing is hung on the car. It's all lined up and ready to go. Now, you have to employ six of these bolts with an Allen wrench head. They're already taped into position. So what you do once you hang the wing, is you take the drill with this head on it, line it up, give it a snap, do all six. One man does three on this side, the other man does three on this side, and you're ready to go back to work. However, as long as you're here, why not a full pit stop? The rule that allows only six over the wall is still in effect, but you can do that. The front tire guys usually take care of the wing. Behind that, you have all kinds of different choreography for the pit stop to get the fuel, the back tires, and the front tires done. 
The target is new nose cone, four tires, load of fuel, 18 seconds. They almost always make it. Another illustration of the greatness that Sebastian Borde is uh, blooming right in front of our eyes. There you see Mario Andretti, five wins from a pole in one season. That is the record. His son Michael at four, Alan Sir Jr., Paul Tracy at four last year. Borde has won three times in 2004 from the pole. So that's what's at stake here. And while we're talking about that, Paul Tracy has it right now. Will there be a charge from Borde? Well, let's find out. Join Chris McClure and Jan Bikas. Alex Tagliani moving into the chicane and his second day of qualifying currently rated ninth on the grid. He was in the top five yesterday, but with the red flag interrupting things has been shoved back a bit, but you can see him drop the hammer there right at the timing line, trying to get into a pretty good lap. Very quick entrance, oh. Gaston Mazzacani gets off the outside of turn number one, and I doubt that they'll be able to handle that with a local. I believe we're going to a red flag as a matter of fact, and that is going to stop them all one more time with time running out now in this what has been a fractured qualifying session on Saturday afternoon in Vancouver. Two and a half minutes left. They have already gotten the required 20 minutes of green flag time, and we could have a major shakeup in the top of the board for the race on Sunday. Tracy currently listed on pole on Friday's time. Then Roberto Levine from the Forsyth stable. Then Bourdais, Dominguez, and Gidley in the top five. Those are a couple upsets in there. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking. I mean, Rodolfo Levine, those guys, they are going to be just ecstatic. And we heard the report earlier that he wisely decided to use Paul Tracy's setup. Why wouldn't you? And that is phenomenal performance for him. And of course, he is the fastest of the day. He gets a championship point. He gets a point for today. Tracy keeps the pole that he earned on Friday. And for the second time in this qualifying, we go to all stop. And that's going to do it. Interesting to me, think of all the people that were out there trying to find space. A Sebastian Bourdais, we saw so many people, Justin Wilson, just backing off trying to find a clear lap when, in fact, they needed to go for it because it was going to be shortened. Paul Tracy, well, you missed it by one spot in Toronto, but this is it. It worked out for you. You're on the pole here in Vancouver. No, it's fantastic. We had a problem with the car. It's uh, developed, I think, an oil leak, and I slid out and hit the wall. And then uh, from then on, I mean, we just had to come in. But uh, it went red at the end. I don't know why. But, uh, you know, it's a great day for our team. And uh, for Rodolfo, starting second, it's fantastic for him. Got to be a bit of a different feeling heading into corner number one with a friendly car beside you. Well, he wants to do well. I mean, obviously, it's, it helps when you have a teammate there, and uh, Pat's right up there as well. So hopefully we can we can give the Newman Haas guys something tomorrow. Congratulations, Paul Tracy. He'll start from the pole position for the Molson Indy Vancouver to Don Martin. Thanks, Todd, here with a surprise story of qualifying at the Molson Indy Vancouver. That Corona is going to be especially sweet tonight, Rodolfo. Congratulations. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the team, I mean, we struggled yesterday big time. You know, uh, we got a failure there. Uh, with the fuel pump uh, was a very tough day for us yesterday thanks to god today we got a great qualifying lap in the first outing uh, where p2 we're gonna we're gonna start in, in position two tomorrow so uh tomorrow hopefully we can we can win the race or uh, a podium for us and for for corona that finally finally we can we can prove what we can do Rodolfo Corina, Car Levina, career best, second starting position on the grid after a previous best of sixth. Now back upstairs to Jim Taddy. Thanks very much, Don. And there are the standings. Paul Tracy with 109 points. The Rodolfo Levine picks up a point because he had the fastest time in today's session in the grid. We're going to set it up for you shortly. We'll have an interesting look. Foresight Racing, certainly happy with that. Paul Tracy leading the way as you knew he would. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. Welcome back to Vancouver. And there's where the Canadians stand on the grid. Tracy, number one. Patrick Carpache will be sixth. And Alex Tagliani will be ninth. Now to set the grid in its uh, final stage, we get set for the race tomorrow. Over to Chris McClure and Jan Bikas. Thanks, Jim. Kind of a fractured qualifying this Saturday afternoon. Forsyth front row, but not the combination we would have expected. Paul Tracy will come from the pole. Rodolfo Levine flanking him on the outside 
as we took a look at all 18 of them. In row number two, Sebastian Bourdais, no surprise there on the inside of the row, but Mario Dominguez on the outside, an opportunity. I think for Mario Dominguez, when he qualifies well, he races well, he'll be a player. Row three, Memo Gidley and Patrick Carpentier. And for Gidley, we talked about the fact how comfortable he is. This was not a fluke. I think he really has that kind of speed. Justin Wilson, the youngster in the next row with Bruno Junquera, who's got a recovery to come about. And Bruno Junquera is not your most patient driver. That should be a good one. Alex Tagliani anchors the next row with Ryan hunter Ray flanking him. Then the teammates from Roosport. And A.J. Allmendinger and Michelle Jourdain they have the talent, but they yet don't have the setup for a street course. Row number seven, Ariel Serbia, who got in the tires in qualifying, and Mario Haberfeld from the Walker Stable. For the next row, Jimmy Vassar coming off the podium in Toronto. He'll like to do better than that. Roberto Gonzalez, and then the last row, Alex Sparafico and Gaston Mazzacani. There they are, all 18 of them, the runners and riders, ready to go for the 15th time in Vancouver. Jim? Thanks very much, and of course, getting there was all the fun. Turn one after the green flag drops has been a problem in this circuit all year long. Only one race, there has been no mishap. So with that grid look, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. And of course, tomorrow, here is the uh, table set for you as far as uh, free race coverage. Uh, it'll be at uh, 1230 in uh, the West Coast, 330 in the East. Green flag will drop a half hour after all that. And uh, we'll see what happens. Paul Tracy leading the way all weekend long. Is it his weekend as it was a year ago? Well, you knew he would answer for Toronto, and he has so far. It'll be interesting. Be with us tomorrow. We'll continue on tomorrow live on the Global Television Network uh, from Concord Pacific Place. Please join us then. Thanks for allowing us into your homes. Good night from Vancouver.